also esteemed guests, uh, veterans, members of the Daughters of the Republic of Texas, Alamo Heroes Chapter. It is truly an honor to be here today to help commemorate this important date in the history of the state of Texas and with it, our proud nation. This is my first San Jacinto victory celebration. And as a representative of our US Navy and its medical department, and having no personal or familial ties to the state of Texas, it may seem that I'm a little bit like a fish out of water. Well, over the years, I've heard about this wonderful event from my colleagues who have been fortunate enough to support. Without a doubt, my tour at Navy Medical Forces Support Command and Joint Base San Antonio would not be complete without a chance to attend this commemoration. So again, thank you for this very special honor. For full transparency, in preparation for this commemoration, I diligently read and tried to familiarize myself with the Battle of San Jacinto and the Texan Revolution. I should have just gone to Mr. Alvarado right over here and I could have had all the answers. I learned that the Battle of San Jacinto, though brief, was a decisive victory in Texan independence. It secured Texas's freedom from Mexico, paving the way for Western expansion and the eventual, eventual territory we defend today. As a naval officer reading through the histories and reflecting on the established narrative, I realized something was missing, namely the unsung yet crucial role of naval power in turning the tide of the war. We all know the story of the valiant Texans led by the charismatic Sam Houston facing down the mighty Mexican army under General Antonio Lopez de Santa Ana. I would like to use this opportunity to give some much needed credit where it is due some 188 years after the fact. Let's set the stage. It is 1835. Texas is simmering in rebellion against Mexican rule. The Mexican Navy, a force to be reckoned with, controls the Gulf of Mexico. This presented a major problem for the Texans. Mexican control over the Gulf threatened vital supply lines. Understanding the strategic importance of controlling the Gulf Coast, the Texas provincial government established its own Navy. This scrappy band of converted schooners and captured Mex Mexican vessels was born out of necessity and fueled by the courage of the daring crews. Many U.S. citizens and Navy sailors sympathetic to the Texan cause volunteered their skills and experience. Former U.S. Navy sailors like Charles Hawkins became leaders in the fledgling Texas Navy shaping its strategy and tactics and playing a role in seizure of Mexican supply ships. One of the most critical yet underappreciated contributions of the Texan Navy was its role in securing the Texas coastline. Unlike the landlocked battles often depicted, the Texan Navy constantly harassed Mexican shipping lanes, disrupting vital supply lines and communication channels. Remember Sam Houston's tactical brilliance at San Jacinto? Well, his strategy hinged on luring Santa Ana away from his supply lines and trapping him on the banks of the San Jacinto River. Texas warships patrolling the coast effectively cut off any potential escape routes for Santa Ana by sea. This strategic maneuver left him with few options ultimately leading to his capture and the signing of the Treaties of Velasco, which effectively ended the war and burned the Republic of Texas. The newly minted Republic of Texas would turn to the U.S. Navy for guidance in strengthening its own naval forces to protect and defend the coastline of Texas. That was desperately needed for the growing Republic. Just as the U.S. Navy modeled, modeled itself after the British Royal Navy, the Texas Navy patterned itself after the United States Navy. The Texan Navy even had medical department personnel, just like our own U.S. Navy. This early collaboration laid the groundwork 
for the eventual annexation of Texas by the United States. The Lone Star State officially joined the Union, bringing its own unique maritime heritage and bolstering the growing strength of the United States Navy. Now, the Texas victory at San Jacinto also had a unique influence on the U.S. Navy. Dr. Bruce Winders, the former Alamo Director of History, has stated that in Europe, Texas caught the eyes and imaginations of each powerful empire and noted its vast and untapped natural resources. The Texas Republic also caught the imagination of a German merchant mariner named Karl Heinrich, who, seeking out a new life for his young family, immigrated to Texas in the 1840s. He would impart many of his sea stories and his travels and adventures at sea to his grandson named Chester. Of course, we know this family best by their surname, Nimitz. That grandson, Chester William Nimitz, inspired by his grandfather's stories and the opportunities he found in Texas, would go on to attend the United States Naval Academy and play a major role in the naval history of World War II as Commander-in-Chief U.S. Pacific Fleet and Commander-in-Chief Pacific Ocean Areas, controlling Allied air, land, and sea forces. Nimitz was not alone, and we can see the important role of Texas on our U.S. Navy with all the state's sons and daughters who have made an indelible mark on our service. People like mess attendant Dory Miller of Waco, Texas, the first African-American to receive the Navy Cross for his heroic exploits during the attack on Pearl Harbor. He is, he is the namesake of our next aircraft carrier, CBN-81. Commander Samuel Dealey of Dallas, Texas, commanding officer of the Gatto-class submarine USS Carter in World War II. Through his leadership and, and daring, Commander Dealey was responsible for the destruction of five enemy destroyers in short-range suicidal torpedo attacks. He was later a recipient of the Medal of Honor. Hospital Apprentice First Class David Hayden of Florence, Texas, one of 22 Navy hospital corpsmen who have received the Medal of Honor. In September 1918, during an Allied offensive necessitating crossing an open field swept by machine gun fire, Hayden ran to the assistance of his wounded Marine brothers, providing life-saving first aid before carrying them to safety. Hurrah, Corman. Over the course of our Navy's history, there have been over 100 warships named after Texas cities, places, people, and of course, the state itself. Everything from the USS Alamo to USS San Antonio to battleship USS Texas which for many years was located adjacent to the San Jacinto Battleground Historic Site in LaPorte, Texas. The Battle of San Jacinto stands as a testament to the Texan spirit of defiance and self-determination. It serves as a reminder of the importance of alliances and international cooperation, as well as the subtle but critical role of the United States Navy. What happened in San Jacinto in 1835 is like the situation currently playing out in the South China Sea and other places around the world, where we face a near peer competitor who seeks control of waterways, resources, and supply lines. But instead of wooden sailing ships, we will use submarines, satellites, and technology-laden vessels full of weaponry. What hasn't changed is the ingenuity, grit, and determination of our sailors just like their forebears in Texas 188 years ago. Today, the U.S. Navy sails the seas as a global symbol of freedom and security. As we look back on the momentous battle that secured Texas independence, let us remember the quiet yet significant role played by the sea services. The fight for self-determination echoes the values we uphold on the seas. Courage, perseverance, and the unwavering defense of liberty. For me, Texas will always be a special part of our Navy, and the Navy, Navy will always be a part of this great state. Thank you, and may God bless all of you here today, the United States Navy, the great state of Texas, all our military brothers and sisters, 
and the greatest country in the world, the United States of America. Thank you very much.